April, can I have the roll call, please? Sure. Mr. Alcazar? Present. Mr. Ann Berenson? Mr. Ann Berenson? Here. Ms. Ford? Here. Mr. Schmidt is not with us. Chairwoman DeVoe? Here. Okay. Uh, next, uh, the pledge. Here. So if all could rise. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, so in accordance with the provisions of Chapter 231 in New Jersey's Public Law of 1975, the Open Public Meetings Act, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by the giving of notice to the Carrier News posting the agenda in the public lobby of the building 48 hours prior to the meeting. Delivery of this notice to the Franklin Township Clerk at least 48 hours prior to the meeting and mailing notice to those persons properly requesting to be mailed notification of meetings at least 48 hours prior to this meeting. Madam Chair, yes. Mayor, since this meeting is currently being conducted electronically pursuant to the provisions of Executive Order 103, Public Laws of 2020 Chapter 11 and the local finance notices promulgated therein. This meeting is being conducted via GoToMeeting on a platform permitted by law. Adequate notice of this has been given in accordance with law. Notice of same is provided to any to, to the normal routes upon which we deliver official notices, as well as any member of the public who so requests. Thank you. Thank you. And this is just a reminder for the public comments. Uh, each person will have three minutes to testify, and uh, these three minutes will be dedicated to uh, specifically uh, concerns or questions that you specifically have. Um, with that, do I have a motion to open the meeting for public comments? No move. And second. Motion of board, you're muted. Okay. Got it. Okay. All those signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Uh, is there anyone here to testify? Okay, you have uh, three minutes. State your name and uh, where your address. Good evening. I'm a, a freelance reporter and I was just looking to set up a time. My name is Andy Milone, M I L O N E, and I just would like to set up a time to speak with um, the chairwoman or the vice chairman about the status of the executive director position. Um, I know I had reached out to executive director Danielson and he kindly accepted my questions, um, but I would also like to speak with the chairwoman or the vice chairman. I had sent emails to both of you and just would appreciate a response. Thank you, that is all. Thank you. Uh, we will be in touch uh, offline. Thank you very much, appreciate that. No problem. Uh, is there anyone else? Is there a motion to close meeting for public comment? Motion. Board. And second. Second, Hazy. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, approval of the minutes. 
And uh, the working session monthly board meeting, uh, which was held on April 6, 2021. Do I have uh, uh, someone to move? It Okay. All board members are eligible. I will move. Is there a second? <laughs> second board. Can I confirm the first? Was that Commissioner Ann Berenson? Uh, that was DeVoe. Oh, okay. Got it. Uh, all those signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? April, take oh. a roll call, please. Mr. Alcazar? Yes. Mr. Ann Berenson? Yes. Ms. Ford? Yes. And Chairwoman DeVoe? Yes. Uh, now the approval of the executive session uh, meeting minutes on April 6th. Uh, do you, I have uh, someone to move? I would remind the board that the approval of these minutes does not necessarily make them public. It just means they are approved. Motion, Jesus. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Alcazar? Yes. Mr. Ann Berenson? Yes. Ms. Ford? Yes. And Chairwoman DeVoe? Yes. Now we are moving on to the executive summary and uh, professionals report. Uh, thank you, Chairwoman. Okay, so, uh, so the, the very top of my report, there's a typo that says February 28th. That should uh, be in March. Uh, relative to the end of March, we received in checks $792,829.57. Year to date collected is $12,836,648.81. We have an open collectible balance, non metered bills of $6,566,990.62. Uh, the last month of penalties, uh, the total of $8,767. Revenue to date, we are at 107% of last year's projections for super rents and at 102% overall. That is relative to us being at a 92% calendar mark. Uh, expense report, expenditures uh, are $2,696,200. $36.43 for April 2021. Year to date is $9,469,740.81. Uh, year to date. Again, that is, we are at the 81 mark, 81% mark of our projected expenditures, yet we're at a 92% calendar mark. Our cash position uh, as of the end of the month was in the unrestricted category was 1,140,883 and 49 cents. Restricted was $14,307.70, I'm sorry, $14,307,072.52. And in the designated category, $7,093,000. $413.18. We have a total cash position of $22,547,622.81. Chairwoman, uh, to begin my discussion items, I just want to give a summary uh, of the budget status. And with your approval, I would like to then go right into the budget document where I, I will share my screen and go through those pages. Yes, that would be great. Uh, so the the 2020 revenue uh, that we projected last year turned out to be better than we expected. Expenses were held at a very uh, stable rate. The end of year settlements are approximately 85% expenditures. 
Um, and that is somewhat relative to the New Brunswick charges, which will be a further discussion. Our capital projects are now uh, also our five-year capital program. I'll bring to your attention, we have a 300% increase of pro uh, project schedules. Our revenue projections this year for the coming budget cycle are conservative and involve a rate increase uh, recommendation based upon the total circumstances of the authority's operations. Um, more, uh, more detail would be seen in our appropriation schedule on the budget that is being introduced tonight. Regarding the appro appropriation expenses, they are increasing. Um, the reasons, uh, due to multiple reasons, and they are due to the increased number of projects we have. Uh, inflation, the status of our pandemic, and using more accurate target formulas. I just will note for the board members that the you know, more cash we have on hand, the more cash we can use, which means less borrowing, less interest rate, less long-term expenses overall. So let me now open up our budget document and then I'll share my screen. So, uh, can you see the screen fine? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, a lot of these pages are are simply administrative. They're they're resolutions and cert certifications. So, I'm just gonna, um, you know, when you see this, I highlighted the areas I had to uh, certify the the amounts. So, I'm gonna go down to the uh, portion of the budget that is. Um, involving the money. I will note there, there are budget messages here. You'll see it uh, on page uh, N1. All the end, all the end pages are uh, where we, we have to articulate answers that the state requires us to, uh, for which the state has questions we have to answer. Uh, particularly when categories increase or decrease more than 10%. So unless, unless you have questions of, regarding the, those sections, I'm just going to go past them and go through the financials. Stand by. Okay. Uh, the first one is um, this is uh, N4. This this page is basically wants to list uh, all the key employees and members of the board and wants to know basically who you work for and if you have a public office or not and how much are you compensated which is uh, publicly accessible information in any case so you see i'm listed at the top um, my my compensation as reported by uh, April is 91,779 as of last year. Scott, Nacero, and April Roach. And then you'll see uh, on the right hand side other public positions that key employees and or board members hold. As example is the New Jersey General Assembly, College of New Jersey, State of New Jersey, Township of Franklin, and so on. So that's like, it's, it's almost like a, a financial disclosure form, if you will. They just want to, you know, uh, shed public light on uh, where our interests are, I guess. So this is a de uh, scheduled health benefits uh, put together uh, by April uh, and the costs associated with them. Uh, these are straightforward numbers. And accumulated liability for compensated absences um basically enumerating uh our staff and uh when they're out and the cost uh that's not associated here's a uh this is a resolution uh regarding our connection fee this needs to be voted on uh the connection fee is the next page 
So our connection fee is being increased. That, and won't, that, be, amount is, that won't be tonight. Uh, next month. Right. So that amount is a result of the auditor doing the auditor's analysis and uh, then being presented that presenting that to the state. So that's not a number we come up with ourselves anyway. Nor a final okay. nor a final number. It's not a final number? No. And how would that number get modified after tonight? I'll advise the go I'll advise the Board of Commissioners in executive session on under uh, closed session matters. Okay. So um, this is this page is F1. This is basically a, a our balance sheet. At the top are revenues, below that are appropriations, some other uh, expense line items, and then our bottom uh, net result. So our revenues are being projected right now for the coming billing site uh, budget cycle. In the amount of fourteen million three hundred eighty thousand four hundred ninety-seven dollars. To to the right, you'll see fiscal year twenty twenty adopted budget. We anticipated twelve point five million, considerably less than what we're projecting this year. And that was for a couple of reasons. Our appropriations uh, are stable, but uh, they are going up a little bit because again our operations have grown significantly. So the sum result of, uh, the net result of the revenues and appropriations is giving us a 926,603 anticipated surplus. The next page is our revenue schedule. So the total revenue here of 14.3 million, the, this next page, breaks it down of per category of uh, projections. We have a residential, business slash commercial, industrial, uh, connection fees, uh, miscellaneous and cam cover uh, revenues, engineering inspections, interest we earn on our money, and penalties we charge our ratepayers. So this is, the, this page is dedicated to just our revenues. This next page is our prior year revenue schedule for comparison's sake. So uh, this page is F4, and this is our proposed appropriations. These are all our categories of expenses. Um, they, they, are, they are in subcategories also themselves. At the top, you'll see administration personnel, administration other then we have cost of, of providing services um, personnel and cost of providing services other so for example you'll see collection system pump station maintenance odor control fuel and power and treatment the biggest number on this page of our expenses is 7.1 million the lion's share of that is going to the Middlesex County um, Utilities Authority for our sewer treatment Chunk of that's going to New Brunswick, and a little tiny piece is going to Southbound Brook. You should know, I'll, bring, I'll recall for you, that our amount we're sending to New Brunswick, we're trying to reduce that, aggressively reduce that, based upon not sending as much flow to them. So our total expenditures being budgeted for this budget cycle is 13 million four hundred fifty three thousand eight hundred and ninety four dollars the slight increase over last year which was 12.5 million but it is uh it's actually less than proportionate based upon what we're doing in the last year uh moving on to f5 this is last year's appropriation schedule and what you can do on f4 you can actually just see the numbers from last year in this column right here. And the furthest column to the right is the percentage of change that we're making this year over last year. And again, 
um, many of these, a number of these, I had to explain and justify to the state auditor why certain things are changing that percentage. So uh, on this page, you'll see our um, our debt, the bonds we, uh, we we get issued, we have to pay back the principal and interest. That that's broken up into two pages: debt service schedule principal and debt service schedule interest. And the second column, you'll see uh, proposed budget year 2022. We are scheduled to pay back 1.3 million dollars in principal. That is a reduction from last year because last year we paid off one of our bonds. However, mid-year we closed on a new bond, so it kind of went up a little bit thereafter. But it is scheduled to go up a little bit and then significantly go down in 2024, assuming no other changes are happening. But as you know, we're in a constant state of paying off and then getting new bonds. So that these numbers just simply go up and down every year. And this year, we are scheduled to pay $231,632 in interest. <clears throat> um, so this page is basically, if you, you're if accounting and auditing was your specialty, this page would make a little bit more sense. But these numbers are derived uh, right out of our last audit that we had conducted back in the summertime. And the the, the big numbers uh, let, are letting us know what our projected unrestricted, undesignated net position at the end of the year is. And, okay, so the next uh, number of pages is our capital projects program. So uh, this is CB, uh, CB3, and on the left-hand side, uh, we have listed and named accordingly all our projects that we plan on spending money on this year. Not to be confused with C, this, the two pages later, which will be uh, a little bit different. So these are projects we're spending money this year. It shows you the estimated cost of the project, and then the columns to the right is where we're getting our money from. Um, the first column, which only has one item, is unrestricted net position. That's basically cash on that we have on hand that is not restricted, nor is it designated for a capital project. Renewal and replacement, all this money is money we uh, cash we have on hand that is designated for a capital project. Debt authorization is restricted money that we're getting from bond money from the iBank. We, we don't have any capital grants and other sources is cash we have on hand, but it's restricted and designated because it's coming from the North Track funds. If you recall, the North Track funds was a fund that uh, a fund of money that we got from developers within our northwest region of town that we call the North Track. We are one required to spend that money, and two, we are required to spend it within the North Track by a certain date. If we fail either one of them, we have to give the money back. So um, I've reviewed these projects before. Of many of them. Uh, some of them were on our budget last year, but as you see, this list has grown significantly from last year. That's basically tripled in its size. So CB4 is this, similar to CB3. It lists all the projects, but it breaks out per year how much more money we're, we're dispersing or plan to disperse on that project and in what year we're, we're doing it. For example, the Foxwood Rehabilitation Phase Two project, I plan on spending $100,000 in 2023, $1.4 million in 2024, 
and another million in 2025. So it basically gives you somewhat of our schedule of the projects. CB5 is very similar to CB3, but what this is doing is it's taking these projects and their total cost, and it's having us enumerate the source of our money. Now, it just so happens almost all of our projects have only one source, but if they had two sources, for example, North Track and cash, North Track and, and um, bonds or bonds and re renewal and replacement, I would have to divide that up where I'm getting that money from. So at the bottom of all these pages, you'll see at the, uh, the total cost of these projects. And right now, our total capital um, improvement program is a total of $20,394,000. So, Chairwoman, that is the end of my presentation on the budget. Um, certainly uh, willing to take any questions to discuss it further, if anyone has those questions. Does anyone have any questions? So uh, I will just say that uh, there's a, a number of steps we have to do after tonight's introduction. Um, you know, April and I are going to be chasing people down because we need to fill in uh, pages that we can't fill in prior to tonight, and signatures are going to be needed. Okay. All right. Um, if no one has any questions, uh, then we can move along to uh, the uh, uh, or okay. sorry. That's just of the budget. Right, the budget. Yeah. Board. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, chairwoman. No, no problem. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, the COVID nineteen status. The uh, admin and engineering staff are still uh, performing a, a work from home model, where they're in the office part of the time and working from home the other part. Operations staff is still on a split schedule. And we recently had the travel policy reviewed and summarized by our attorney. Um, Eric, at this time, did you want to speak on our travel policy or restricted and restrictions? I'll just briefly advise the board that we are trying to conform to a combination of CDC guidelines and the governor's executive orders related to travel. Obviously, those individuals who are fully vaccinated, and for those of you who are not aware of the definition, definition of fully vaccinated is the receipt of both of the Pfizer or both of the Moderna shots or the one J and J shot plus two weeks thereafter provides you, at least for the moment, full vaccination for a period of time, at least for the next six months, we obviously wait further testing and guidelines. Those individuals will not have restrictions vis-a-vis -vis where they travel, nor will they be required quarantine for those individuals who are not fully vaccinated, i.e. individuals who do not have both shots, individuals who have both shots but have not completed the two weeks thereafter, or individuals who have not been have not received a vaccine, they are still subject to the state restrictions relative to travel, which is only within the surrounding states of New York, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. And or individuals will be required to undergo quarantine subsequent to any return from or showing any symptoms of. And that's where we are at the moment. Obviously, as the board is aware, uh, this changes almost on a daily basis, uh, depending on whatever CDC and the state does. I will indicate the travel restrictions have not necessarily been addressed in accordance with the governor's executive order yesterday, but I think it's 238, I've lost track of the numbers, where he basically reopened certain businesses under certain conditions. I will remind everybody that irrespective of whether you are fully vaccinated or not, 
individuals coming into contact with other individuals within the confines of an indoor setting still require masks and at least a six foot distance. So even though businesses have been reopened or will be reopened as of either Friday or May 19th, they still must conform with the Department of Health regulations and the CDC guidelines. Thank you, Eric. No problem, Joe. So on your escrow maintenance accounts, um, you know, uh, as you, we've discussed in the past, we've had we have accounts that are held, uh, which are basically abandoned funds, and I signed uh, our bookkeeping and our engin in-house engineer to uh, try to um, uh, return those funds and those that they are able to. Uh, we have a, a moral and a, a professional obligation to then, and a legal one, to surrender that money to the state treasury. The most important one being the legal one. So uh, our staff has been communicating with them. They've finalized the requirement that these funds need to be transferred via wire transfer. And they're at the final steps of uh, making uh, those arrangements. This is money we can't use, we can't draw interest on it, and it basically also costs us you know, overall management uh, to just hold on to it for no benefit of anyone's. So best the state to get that money, which they put into a special fund that they can't use either. Uh, connections, uh, there's one connection for this month we are expecting 183 connections within the next month. We still are on target for our year estimate. However, next year's, I want to stress this, next year's indicators are low for our connection uh, forecast. And I did represent that low projection in our budget that I just uh, reviewed with you. The continuation of the waiving interest, we, that was canceled uh, starting January 1st of this year. Middlesex County Utilities Authority, there's nothing to report, Southbound Brook. Um, I did advise our attorney that I want to be more aggressive in moving this forward to modernize and update our agreement with Southbound Brook and look for any other opportunity to synergize with the neighboring uh, authority. New Brunswick's water and sewer bill. Uh, this is somewhat of a mess, as some of you are aware. We're working, trying to do our best to be good neighbors. We did receive data from New Brunswick. Uh, when our heads stop spinning, I'm sure we'll be able to analyze that data. Uh, one, but one thing for sure is that there's going to be a, a follow-up meeting with New Brunswick staff is going to be required to understand that data. Uh, the archiving of documentation. Uh, uh, an update to that, as you know, we are digitizing our documents instead of saving uh, hard copies here. And uh, we are scheduled to receive those documents back on May 14th, which I will at that time review and inspect. And thereafter, the original documents will be scheduled for shredding. There will be exceptions to that, such as certain documents and certain types of documents that our operations staff would prefer that we keep on site. As well, commissioners, as those documents which we are required to keep vis-a-vis -vis the state archives. And my office is working with Mr. Danielson and Mr. Santiago relative to same. So bankruptcy audit of accounts. Uh, so we're getting into we're heading into the second half of the year. I'm going to need to keep a close eye on this relative to any accounts that we may need to send a tax sale. Um, and you know, uh, I'm going to also need to keep an eye on it because based upon the township's past experience of their workflow or the lack of uh, their understanding, uh, I need to make sure that accounts that are far delinquent and should be sent to tax sale are actually sent to tax sale. And those that claim to um, have an exemption of the tax sale 
uh, actually have that ex a valid exception. Our Jeff Broker uh, was notified of a homeowner uh, damage involving the Western Canal Force Main rehabilitation work, and we are working uh, we're working out the best path forward regarding the damage and the restitution of that property. Uh, community virus monitoring. So Congressman uh, Watson Coleman submittal was rejected by uh, Congresswoman's office. I did request a secondary review of options that was rejected. So I'm going to ask Christian Santiago to just give us a short uh, summary of where we are with our partnership with Rutgers and our operation staff. Yeah, not a problem, Joe. So basically, just the big picture of everything, the, what we're trying to do is we're trying to collect some samples from various parts of our township to basically monitor for um, the COVID um, variants in the wastewater. So basically we partnered, we are attempting to partner with Rutgers and Rutgers role is they're gonna analyze the data for us. So we're, um, the, the plan as of now is we will, um, we will basically conduct sampling at several sites and send it to Rutgers and Rutgers will basically process it and tell us whether those sites are positive for COVID or not. Um, recently, what Rutgers has been dealing with is they had a set price for a while. Like this is how much we charge per sample. Recently, I was told there was some negotiations to change the price. I believe it was going to go up a little, but I did get a little notice that, hey, um, the price is going to be a few hundred dollars per sample. So where are we right now is we're just trying to see how many sites we want to sample and the locations of those sites and to see also availability. So for example, we do have a lot of projects on our plate. So maybe if there's a lot of sites, maybe we have someone else come in to do the work, or maybe instead of having 10 sites, maybe we limit it to maybe less than five. So Scott and his team can do a better job of doing it. And that's kind of where we are right now. Yeah. And the overall purpose of the project is, you know, it's not just to contribute to the scientific community, but if they get an efficient and uh, accurate uh, tell of where COVID viruses are in our community, you know, where we could possibly react with the health services, uh, the sewage authority, I think, should be inclined to participate in that. And so basically that's what we're looking into. Can we monitor and detect the COVID-19 virus in our sewer flows? And there are other agencies out there that are doing this currently. Uh, under New Jersey Health Benefits Program, uh, there was an uh, overpayment uh, a little over a year uh, for health insurance, but um, uh, in the process of working on a resolution uh, of more uh, to report next month on that. Um, Commissioner and Barrison, uh, do you have anything to report with the Municipal Amnesty Program? Uh, did, did the Township Manager give you any numbers? Yeah, so that's, uh, that's Commissioner Barrison. Um, I don't have the numbers, but the ordinance is in effect. Uh, uh, we will uh, monitor and can hear. Yeah, your audio is uh, uh, off sync I, with your video. Can you hear me? We confer a little uh, bit. Oh. Okay. I'm using a different laptop, maybe that's why. Are you using AOL dial-up? Let me... Can I come on the other PC? Why don't you go... All right, we can maybe come back to you while you work on that. Yeah. So the... The next uh, item is the Buy Board National Purchasing uh, Membership. Uh, Scott, do you want to give a quick overview, summary of this? Yeah, 
Scott, you're muted. You're muted, Scott. Um, I don't have anything other than what we discussed at the prep meeting, but uh, by board is basically a co-op program um, where there's a vendor on the by board uh, co-op that does a lot of the trenchless type repairs that we are seeking for several areas, the Brookline area rehab, as well as the um, campus drive rehab. Um, we are going to look into further. I think Joe was going to ask maybe April, I think, to look into that further to see if we could become a member. It's free to join. Um, and basically, uh, if everything's on the up and up, which I believe it is, uh, we should be able to jump on that and do some of these projects through since it's already been publicly bid. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, assuming this makes Scott's life easier and April as a QPA and Eric as our attorney uh, can certify that we're in compliance with New Jersey law, um, this should be uh, something that would help us uh, operate faster and uh, less expensive. So Eric, do I need, do I need board vote approval? Mm -hmm. We need board approval to authorize Ms. Roach to go forward with the application for membership. Uh, I'm going to ask for a regular vote this evening and then we'll do a formal, we'll formalize it by resolution for the purposes of the record, but it can be done by motion. And that will be on the, one of the additions, one of the two additional resolutions I will ask that the connection won't be withdrawn. Okay, so uh, the, the last part of my report uh, is resolutions. So I just want to take a moment just to talk about the resolutions that we're going to have tonight, um, since there's more than last last month. So the first resolutions, again, they're, they are very standard. Uh, these are financial resolutions that are moving money from one account to the other and the amounts on those resolutions and the source and destination accounts are all dictated to us by our banking trustee. Those resolutions and those financial transactions included payroll account, operating expense account, general fund account, renewal and replacement account, and the North Track account. There are no escrow resolutions tonight. Um, after we go through those resolutions, we have three possible resolutions. Uh, well, one's possible. One is the introduction of the 2021-2022 budget. One is the connection fee schedule for 2021-22 cycle. And, and I, uh, resolution approving the co-op purchasing membership. Madam Chair, I'm asking for the connection fee resolution to be held. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, does anyone have any questions regarding the resolutions? I mean, they're pretty straightforward, but it's possible that a member has some <laughs> questions on them. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, I am done with my executive director's report. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, I actually have a couple questions. Um, regarding the New Brunswick data, is that new data that we have just received or is this information that we've already obtained? New data? Uh, it's, it's new data. So they're throwing numbers at, at us, but we don't know how they're using these numbers to translate that into a dollar amount they've been charging us over the years so um our in-house professionals have looked at it multiple engineers have looked at it our auditors looked at it and our attorney has looked at it and everyone has independently was shaking their heads i would indicate madam chair this is part of the ongoing negotiation for a new agreement with new brunswick and therefore 
Um, any other questions that members of the board may have, I'd be more than happy to answer in executive session. Got it. Okay. Perfect. Uh, I have additional questions regarding the sampling data for uh, our COVID-19 project. Uh, in regards to Christian mentioning about the waste samples and how it will cost a hundred, uh, how will we be, uh, what funds will we be using for that potentially? Well, that's up for discussion and uh, the discretion of, of the authority. Um, I don't see it to be a lot of money at all in our overall scheme of things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, remember, how, how exciting would this be if we were able to detect COVID virus in a manhole outside the high school or one of the nursing homes or one of the underserved neighborhoods in our town and be able to send the health department in there to you know, knock on doors or mail letters or provided additional services, but especially our schools and our nursing homes. Right. So um, I guess uh, to answer your question, how I would handle this, I would look at um, well, the status of all our expenditure accounts, our revenue, and figure out the safest place uh, to draw from. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think even though I, I have conservative revenue projections and our expense, our expenditure uh, is going up, I think we'll have plenty of money to afford at least a, a you know, a significant start of the project. Possibly we could also ask the state budget to possibly give us a few dollars for it. Maybe you know somebody that could uh, rewrite the state budget. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I mean, we're talking less than ten thousand dollars. Right. Right. Okay. Um, and in addition to that, uh, in order to track locations, will we be using GIS uh, for that? Uh, no, so, I don't think we need to. I think you know we're going to identify uh, opportunity manholes and just take from those manholes and you know document that. So if uh, you know if we get readings in the manhole that's on the high school property, we'll know where it's coming from. Or if the manhole that's right outside a nursing home on Demont Lane, we know we know where that flow is coming from. Got it. Okay. Okay, moving on to uh, the executive director summary and operations report. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. So under legal, we uh, had a very busy month, the Somerset Street uh, neighboring vacant lot. Uh, we did receive uh, a formal land appraisal and that appraisal is being shared with the other attorney and we're waiting for that response. Uh, New Brunswick sewer bills, we received the data from New Brunswick, very confusing. Uh, I think we need an executive session tonight to discuss that. Uh, attorneys worked on all projects, legal supervision and bonds uh, review, uh, bid, uh, bids and document reviews for us. The Western Canal Force Main, emergency purchase agreements and the easement encroachment issues. The attorneys worked on all, all of them with us and supervised certain uh, communications. <clears throat> As well, the attorney, uh, on my request, did a thorough review of COVID-19 policies. I think, uh, I think Eric covered everything on that. The Marcy Street Watershed uh, Rehab, so we did uh, issue the notice to proceed to the contractor. The schedule has been assigned and date is between early December, end of January. Staff is re reviewing the shop drawings with the contractor. Hamilton Street Pump Station is basically completed. It's in full production operational mode. Electrical issues did arise with the uh, pump breakers. New Jersey DEP did a walkthrough inspection and completed that inspection and we passed. 
contract closeout steps will be taken soon and this project was completed within schedule and within budget. East Millstone Pump Station Rehabilitation Project. This uh, status is green. Notice to proceed was sent to the contractor. The next steps would be a pre-con meeting this week uh, and schedule with the contractor to uh, and formulate a completion date, uh, the shop drawing review, permits, and then start the work. High Bay Garage a project. I did recently reactivate this project. The engineers is CDM, and they'll be reviewing their resources so then they can then assign them uh, to this project and uh, schedule the same with the authority. Somerset Street Pump Station Rehab. Uh, I, it says yellow, but I turned it green, so excuse me. But the engineering agreements and planning documents will be submitted. Uh, very soon, NJDP funding for funding to begin. Recurrent of the dedicated pump uh, was delayed uh, originally. The planning documents for the pumping station are being completed this week, and they will be submitted to the iBank, the H2 Loans website. Uh, Brookline Avenue Watershed Rehab. Um, so this was an emergency project, as, as if you recall. The iBank loan application is completed, in particular, the step three. The bid document preparation process has begun. It's about 75% complete, and then that will be submitted. The estimated schedule for this, the final design documents around the end of May, and if everything goes well, hopefully we'll be uh, authorized to uh, advertise the bid in July. The Western Canal Force Main Emergency Rehab is going great. It's green. It's within budget, budget on schedule. Uh, I'm just going to emphasize again that our in-house staff, particularly Scott Nocero, is uh, performing as general contractor on this project, which is saving us hundreds of thousands of dollars, doing a fantastic job. There was minor damage done to a property on Samuel Place. Uh, we are in the process of doing more research before the authority responds in depth uh, on the matter to the homeowner. So the pipes, there's two main, two main ways the pipe, uh, the force main pipes are going to be rehabilitated, but both of those processes are in progress. Uh, and Scott Nacero, along with CME, are closely supervising the contractor and a project are, and are assuring us, um, I think we, we, they've already proven they're saving us uh, a ton of money that would have otherwise cost us. I'm just jumping down uh, through these projects. Uh, our sewage Authority Roof Rehabilitation. Um, Scott Nacero did receive um, Quotes on this, uh, quotes were from a co-op, a purchasing co-op member. Uh, Scott, you want to, uh, where were you on this, to, to put to, to put the 20-year 20 20-year 20 warranty roofs on or just go with the 10-year warranty roofs? Yeah, so it, it depends on where we are with the budget, and that's something that I think you and I are going to sit down on Thursday and talk about. Um, we have a couple of options. Unfortunately, the uh, older buildings, um, the original buildings, have multiple layer roofs, uh, which typically means to do it the right way and get the full 20-year industry standard warranty, you'd have to do a full tear-off, uh, obviously more expensive. There is a um, restore method they can use. Uh, you will only get a 10-year warranty with that method. The rear storage garage, which is also known as the archive building, uh, that's a newer building built in 98. That only has a single layer roof on it, so that's definitely definitely eligible for a restore method, um, saving us a little bit of cost there. Um, so we'll, I guess Thursday, I think we're sitting down, Joe, we'll sit down and go over those numbers and then see where you are, maybe present something at the next meeting. Okay, uh, question for our Bernstein, our attorney. Uh, so this, uh, these quotes are coming from an approved purchasing co-op, but do I do I still need board to vote to approve us 
regardless of which option roof replacement option we go or, or do i have the authority on my own yes so the first question it needs board approval okay so uh chairwoman i would like to ask the board to consider uh approving me to make a decision on one method or the other and us going forward with the roof uh repair rehabilitation replacement it's been it's been on a project it's been a project on the board for two years now and this is one of the ones we we want to complete it and get it off the board so uh yeah well, you can do that now or down, uh, down the road uh, the last item on my report is just the general engineering our general engineering services have included but not limited to uh, the new new brunswick sewer billing issue the Western Canal Force Main Rehabilitation Issue uh, and easement research. Easement research included easements and encroachments involving the Western Canal Force Main, uh, the railroad, the railroad billing us for easement and otherwise. Chairwoman, that concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Seeing none, we will be moving on to committee reports, uh, negotiations and personnel. Uh, Ram, do you have anything to add regarding that? No, we did uh, meet uh, on those committee uh, matters uh, lately, so I do not have anything to add but can you hear me now though yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right i sound like a uh, sprint uh ad <laughs> can you hear me now remember that guy uh anyway i just wanted to complete what i was saying uh when yeah. uh, i was on the other laptop if i may yes okay so so the ordinance uh, the sump pump uh, amnesty ordinance is in effect um, I, I don't think we have had any applications, um, but I think we might want to uh, have a news release or something to let the public know about the ordinance so that the uh, people at large uh, would be aware of it. Um, frankly, very few people listen to the council meetings um, and um, the, the whole ordinance may be just not have been noticed by the people. That's uh, so, I forgot. Uh, I don't know if you're done, Commissioner Barrison, but uh, uh, it, when you are done, I, I forgot to bring up one other issue. Yes, I, that's that's all I had to report, Joe. Okay. Uh, one other issue I'm going to bring up, uh, the Marcy Street Sewer Shed Rehabilitation Project. Um, I'm going to emphasize, one, that, that project was on the board long before I came on to the Sewers Authority, and it just happens to be a street that I live on. Um, just to let you know a new issue we're dealing with. So, I have to uh, turn back time a little bit. So, the seven years ago, the, the water company, American Water did a rehabilita rehabilitation project in that, in that development, and they replaced all the water pipes. They did a really bad job in uh, dealing with the curbs, the trenches, backfilling, compacting, and the installation of the valve chamber. Specifically, the valve chambers are supposed to be surface mounts. They're supposed to be right on the surface. Many of them are sticking up. Additionally, they trenched underneath the curb, and when they backfilled the soil, they did not do a good job, and now the curbs are sinking into the street and disappearing while the valve chamber is sticking up. So in my attempts to get council and, and the township to step up, because they were derelict, in my opinion, for lack of supervision and signing off on this work, um, I've gotten the attention of American Water, who I'm meeting with in the next week, uh, to look at maybe repairing this. 
However, what's coincidental is if they were to come out here and want to repair this, that's about the time that the sewage authority is digging up the area anyway. So, you know, you got the township, you got the sewage authority, and you got the water company that should be doing something because they've destroyed the curbs, they're sinking, and they have these valve chambers that need to be reinstalled. So I don't know where this is going to go, but I want to synergize efforts on the sewage authority, the town, and the water company, and coordinate schedules so we're not in conflict with one another. Because in the end, we know the sewage authority is going to be digging up that whole neighborhood and repaving. Hopefully, we can work something out where the curbs can be fixed and those valve chambers fixed as well. Thank you, Chairwoman. Yeah. Um, moving forward uh, for uh, regarding the committee reports, uh, municipal liaison. Um, I believe there is nothing to report regarding uh, that uh, construction. Uh, we've heard updates, uh, safety. Um, Scott, has there been any accidents? No accidents, correct? No, ma'am. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, moving on to the consent agenda. All the items that are uh, listed below are considered to be of routine nature, thereby requiring one motion and one second for all items. If any member wishes to remove an item from the consent agenda, please advise me at this time which resolutions need to be handled separately and they will be addressed and voted on separately. Uh, resolution one is the payroll account of $140,693. Uh, $140, resolution number two, operating expense account, uh, $1,949,757.10. Resolution number three, the general expense account, $846.64. Resolution number four, the renewal and replacement, $34,184.12. And resolution number five, which is the North Track Crossing, uh, $823,011.31. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. And second. Second, Jesus. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Alcazar? Yes. Mr. Ann Baronson? Yes. Ms. Ford? Ms. Ford? You're on mute. I, I'm sorry, yes. And Chairwoman DeVoe. Yes. Okay. Uh, we will not be voting on the resolution for connection fee. So uh, resolution number two is the, approve, uh, the approval of the 2021-2022 budget as introduced for submission to DCA. Uh, do I have a motion? I would add, oh. Madam Chair, and with the waiving of the reading of the budget. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion? The motion. And second? Second, Jesus. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Alcazar? Yes. Mr. Ann Baronson? Yes. Ms. Ford? Yes. And Chairwoman DeVoe? Yes. And Eric, there's an additional resolution, correct? Yeah, I need a motion, Madam Chair, to authorize the uh, administrative manager to submit an application to by, hold on one second. By board. By board, thank you, Scott. By board. 
This is a cooperative purchasing entity. We will formalize it more. We will formalize a resolution accordingly. Got it. Uh, do I have a motion? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Alcazar? Yes. Ms. Grand Berenson? Yes. Ms. Ford? Yes. And Chairwoman DeVoe? Yes. Uh, now a motion to open into executive session. Executive oh. session, Madam Chair, for the purposes of uh, attorney client privilege and negotiations of the collective bargaining related to the New Brunswick uh, agreement. Do, uh, do, the chair, if I may, uh, yes. do we want to wait maybe to the uh, very end of the meeting for executive session? Because if we do and we report that we're not going to take any actions thereafter, maybe members of the public don't have to stay online if they don't want to. Yeah, we are at the end. We are at the end. Okay. So we can, yeah. we can ask all non-members and staff to disconnect. Uh, so Scott, Joe Jamel, Howard Matson, uh, Councilman Wright, Franklin Reporter and Advocate, Christian Santiago, you guys can all disconnect once I go into executive session. Okay, do I have a motion? Motion four. And a second. Second. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I have uh, 7.43 and I am going to stop recording. All right. Everyone have a good night. Have a good night. Have a good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.